Well, hello, happy campers. Uh, we're Tony and Peggy, and we're stressless camping. Absolutely, this and is part of our journey to the Orange Empire Railway Museum. That's right. This is going to talk a little bit about the Harvey houses, which were uh, the restaurants where people could stop and have a meal while the trains stopped and took on water. That's on the Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe Railway. They have a whole Harvey House Museum there. We met with a really fascinating lady. And so uh, without any further ado, we'd like to introduce you to her. So here we go. Girls Museum. Our mission statement is to keep the story of Fred Harvey and his Harvey Girls alive. Uh, we have been Harvey Girls here at Orange Empire Railroad Museum. So what we try to do is help you understand what the Harvey Girls did, what they know, and how they were trained. We have a panel with Fred Harvey, as much as known about Fred Harvey, because he was a very, very private man, considering the kind of business that he did and the operations that he had. Uh, they said that he could be very angry uh, if things weren't done the right way, because that's the way you were trained and you were not to be, deviate from that. Uh, railroad uh, depots and that's where he would have his train when the trains come in they were about every hundred miles they had 20 minutes to feed their customers however many there were and have them back on the train and ready to go in 20 minutes and they said they never rushed the customers there's plenty of time so mm -hmm. they were prepared and they were ready for them and so, um, and sometimes they even wired in their orders ahead knowing what the menu was. And then people chose and they'd have that ready for them. So it was very interesting how they did it. It was like what some people call the fast food, one of the fast food <laughs> restaurants. Because he did, he served you and had you a full meal. Uh, one of the recipes would be, uh, for breakfast, would be three eggs, uh, some kind of potato hash, uh, hash browns or, or cottage potatoes or something like that. You had your choice. And it had um, a, what they called a slab of ham. Never, ever, his motto was to skimp on the ham. Mm -hmm. It was to be a slab of ham. And um, so he then uh, would serve you with that same breakfast a slab of apple pie which was Ooh. like a fourth of apple pie he had his own bakers he had his own bake shop there wasn't uh preservatives at the time so these uh things were um everything was prepared the morning of your rolls your bread your your pastries uh and these uh apple pies mainly but they made other pies but they made from 50, 50 to uh, 80 pies a day. And they could be different ones, but mainly they were apple because that's what people chose. All fresh fruits and vegetables came in daily um, uh, from the trains when they come. You could get fresh fish from um, anywhere the fresh f fish was. If you were uh, in the east and they had lobster, that's where you got it. If you were in the west and you had uh, uh, red whatever fish it was, <laughs> <laughs> shrimps and things like that, then you would get it from us. We could take uh, a product back and forth, which was the purpose of the Sioux Line Railroad and it, and the Santa Fe Railroad for, um, for uh, their transfer of food. That was par part of how they went out and got business. Uh, they would move their Harvey girls around they made from 17 to 18 dollars a month but that included room and board and that was very good money for the time period in the late 1800s and early 17s and so on uh, are not 17s 18s and 19s uh, we think one of the last restaurants to to close was at union station downtown los angeles and we think in the 1967 period time mm -hmm. And uh, we heard that it has just reopened, and it is now a Bisco uh, brewery. <laughs> so, uh, and also that many other restaurants tried to be there, but it is historical building, so you can't go in and you can't really oh, yeah. change things. I have been in the Harvey House for several occasions, and uh, it is beautiful, just beautiful in there. 
and uh, the tile work and all the beautiful work. Mary Coulter is the one that designed it and did the tile and had the tile work done. She was one of the first um, um, architects to come out, uh, women architects. And uh, nobody would hire her because they thought that men probably wouldn't work for a woman. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, uh, it was hard for her to get a job. Well, Fred Harvey hired her right away. And she um, she did Angel View at uh, Grand Canyon and the Hopi House. And because of that, uh, then her name got better. The men definitely respected her, so they worked for her. So. Um, that's pretty much we have a dish collection uh we do show the harvey girl movie only because <laughs> we want people to know or to relate try to relate and uh but byron harvey jr was on set to make sure it went as close to um original harvey girls as possible you didn't do anything stupid uh it, it was a musical so it was music song and dance and that was great and wonderful, and the and our actresses were terrific, <laughs> but um, that is not the real story. So, but the Harvey uniforms were, you know, <laughs> and so today uh, we enjoy watching that movie because it just brings us back not only to the uh, to the um, uh, the actors and actresses, but uh, the story. In here to our museum to tell us about the Harvey girls, oh, uh, their, Harvey girls. their story, their personal story. Wow. But one of the ladies was in her 80s, uh, early 80s. And so we always asked these women when they came, did you uh, marry a railroad man or a cowboy or a rancher? Or, uh, you know, tell us how you, um, if you got married at all. Some of them didn't. Um, so the lady says, well, she said she guess she could tell her story. And um, she said that this was this cowboy, he came in and he just always sat at her station and he followed her wherever she went. His eyes never left her anytime he was in the restaurant and he'd always come where she was. And so um, this picture reminds me of her story. And so she yeah. said there was this cowboy and he came in and he just, he just kept swooning. Everybody teased her because he was right with her wherever she went. And she said, one day that cowboy left me five cent tip. And she said, I knew that cowboy was interested. <laughs> and she said, and by the way, I married that cowboy. Uh -huh. So I thought, this is my story and I have to tell you. <laughs> I love it.